Hey there everyone, it's Edward again. And uh, I want to build a CNC machine, but I wanted to show you what I got so far. This is probably not everything, but it's, a, it's enough to show you what I've been doing. A little bit of a backstory here. During a pandemic, or before the pandemic, I wanted to sell 3D printer filament, and I built a website and was selling products for 3D printing. And I wanted to sell linear rails for 3D printing. And so I imported a, a starter set to get the ball rolling, took some pictures, and then before you know it, the pandemic hit, and I needed income. You know, I needed a, a job, and I needed income to stabilize things, and before you know it, I had $2,000 of 2018, uh, 2019 blocks and rails, and I didn't know what to do with them. I actually sold quite a few blocks, though. Yeah, so I'll go through that. I'm not going to, I don't think I want to use these for my CNC project because I want an even bigger rail. This is a, a one of the miniature rails, I think they call it. It's basically stainless steel and it's got one track that rides along there. You'll see these on 3D printers a lot. I didn't like it. It had small screws. I think these are M3. I can't remember if those are M3 as well. M3 and M M3 holes. And then we have the, this is the start of industrial scale linear rails. And this is the HDR15. And this is a flange block. And this is, I think they call them a tall block or a high block. Different places have different names. But uh, I like the flange blocks better. I think they just look cooler. They thread through. So you can thread all the way through. So if you have a, a mix of screws, you're not bottoming out like you'll bottom out on those. And this is a HGR20, and this is a HGW20 block. You can see the size difference, it's a jump. And there's a 25 and a 30 block as well, and they go up to like 50 or 60. But you can kind of see the leaps of different sizes here. Yeah, the, the 3D printer I want to build is going to be a 30 series. I kind of just want to go maximum, or not 3D printer, the CNC machine. I want to build, I want to go maximum block and rail size that makes sense for a hobby mill slash router. Because I don't want to backtrack. You know, you start on a certain path, or I use these to build the machine. And later on I want to upgrade. Now I got blocks that are too small, or rails too I think it's easier to go big on the rails than it is to go small on the rails. These are some T-nuts that I bought. I got a thousand uh, T-nuts of this size, M8s. I got another bag in the garage. And that's from the website that I was going to build. And these are, I think, chrome-plated M8 dome socket cap screws. I'm not sure the grade or quality. For the 3D printer I was building, they were perfect. Some samples from companies in the U.S. When you buy high wind rails in the U.S., they usually come from in this box. When you buy them, and they really don't mark them, what a pain in the ass. But it's just an empty box. It's probably on my 3D printer already. You get them in different preloads. So preloads, basically, in terms of the blocks at least, the, the size of the ball bearings. So I think this one is a, a light preload. I think this one was a medium preload because it's taken way more force to move it. So I had uh, light and uh, middle, medium preloads. Here is a QH block. Now you can see by the gray, it's just it's just this block and the QH. And what makes that a QH is that the bearings have separators of a little plastic drag chain that separates each individual ball bearing from each other. And uh, the concept is that the grease is packed into those plastic chains and that the ball bearings don't rub against each other because there's no point in the ball bearings rubbing against other ball bearings. It doesn't add any alignment or anything. It's just friction that's unneeded. So these are QH series. You pay a little bit more, a little bit quieter, a little bit longer bearing life, a little bit more uh, grease. Um, the grease lasts a little bit longer. 
This is a 1605 ball screw. The 16 means the diameter is 16 uh, millimeters wide. And the, the lead or the pitch or however you want to describe it. So each rotation rotates this block 5 millimeters. So it's a 1605. I don't remember the length. But when you're buying them, remember if the length, the Chinese like to do it like this. If the length says 200, it's from this end to this end. Not from the start of the, the lead to the end of it, if that makes sense. I'm noticing I'm not looking at the camera sometimes, so forgive me for that. But yeah, and I like to buy stuff to see what I'm... Dang it, I'm not going to be able to get it out, guys. It's kind of got a friction fit, and the sunlight's probably heating it up. So these two serve the same purpose, but this one holds a motor, so let's do that. And you'll have a uh, misalignment coupling. Should have brought that out for the video, but it goes here. So it does the same thing this does, but it makes it one complete unit. I wanted to buy a Misumi brand one of these. I want to get all Misumi brand uh, blocks instead of these Chinese ones because they come with angular bearings press fit in already. Um, these are our deep groove ball bearings, which aren't really appropriate. We won't go into too much detail, but this was like 50 or 60 bucks. Misumi's version of this uh, was 600. I don't know why. These are generic brand blocks from China. They're not high wind brand. These are generic linear rails. You can see the difference. They have a black stripe underneath. Let's go take a look at that black stripe up close. I put these on. The, this is a non-high wind, so you can see there, high, non-high winds. And high winds. I took these out. These are brand spanking new because I thought they were rusting. And it just turns out the oil that they're packed with oxidized. And that oxidization looked yellow. And I was able to take acetone and rub the oxidized grease off. But it does leave a little bit of a stain. Um, the pitting, I don't feel pitting. I feel where the laser etched the Highwind logo. I don't feel the pitting, but it's definitely stained now. So, yeah, I always felt the Highwind uh rails looked a lot better out of the packaging than the Chinese and the difference is these are high ones Taiwan and the Chinese ones are well China obviously so a little bit of difference is how they're packed when you get high high wind from China the Chinese get them from Taiwan and then ship them to you but they come packed a little better so you can see, you know, the high wind logo starts to show out. It's a little bit better out of the package, shinier. The, the ground, this is ground you can see, maybe not coming out of camera, but you can see a, a grind mark. It's a little bit more pronounced in the high wind. And that's precision ground, I think, so you can use flatness and get a dial indicator on there. And yeah, these services, this is your dial indicator surface. That's your dial indicator surface, your datum, whatever you want to call it. See, one side has it. Because it costs money to do this, right? It costs money to get these grind marks right. You can see this one. And even this one has it. People say that the linear rails are no good for a 3D printer because they wear out, but... What's wearing out is probably they're using stainless steel miniatures. And stainless steel does not have the same wear resistance that these do. But it doesn't rust. So, pick your poison, I guess. I work out of a semi-outdoor environment with my 3D printer. So it's like a patio. You know, sometimes the night air gets to them. But these have been, what, 2018? And that's the worst they look. I think I'm doing okay. This one got really pitted because I left it outside, uh, outside in open air, not in the patio in open air. 
and there was a leak in the roof and it dripped right on there and these things rusted like immediately. So if that happens, first off, identify if it's rust. This is actually oxidized oil and I can prove that. Well, it was all up and down this and you just take acetone and remove the oxidized oil and it'll show shiny steel. You may still have some rust, like maybe on the end, but that rust is due to the oxidized oil will being oxidized and be becoming, I think, hygroscopic, absorbing moisture out of the air, and then starting to rust. So even your protective layer of grease can turn into uh, a water absorber over years. But, you know, a quick polish, get a nice, you know, something with some torque, and some battery life. I get these from uh, Home Depot, the Ryobi polishing wheels. Get the, I can't remember if this is Emery or Jewelers Rogue, but get the black one. Um, and polish and keep the grind marks correct so you don't wash them away. But yeah, look at that. And it's, you can't feel it, fingernail, there's no click, it's perfect. So. Bring them back to life, man. People say, oh, you ruined the accuracy. Well, here's the thing. I worked in a manufacturing environment. The accuracy is irrelevant for 90% of what people do. And if accuracy is like your big thing, you're probably not using a high wind rail. You're probably not using a 15 series, right? Like you just, you have to be careful what you hear about online because a lot of these people, it's more their ego than them actually having the knowledge do you lose accuracy if you have to clean a linear rail? Maybe. Will you notice it as a hobbyist? Absolutely not. Maybe with a dial indicator, for most people it's not gonna be a thing. And that's it. I just wanted to show you what I had. I kinda wanna sell it. I don't wanna design a 3D printer around blocks. Or I mean, I keep saying 3D printer. I'm talking about a CNC machine. I don't wanna, design a CNC machine around rails that are smaller than I would like. These are like 540 millimeter and I got I think 720 millimeter linear rails. But I don't want to design it and then I want something bigger, heavier and the plate steel that I'm ordering is like deflecting the beam somehow and I got to go back to the drawing board. So I think it's better to go uh, with bigger rails, 30 series, scale up and then design everything around a scale up. And if it's overkill, well, I don't have to worry about it no more. If it's underkill, then I'm going to have deflection in the, the end mills. I'm going to have other issues that I just, I don't want to deal with. Plus the screws. I mean, that's a M4. That's an M5. That's something to consider. The M, the flanged and the uh, square high block use different screws. So you're actually getting a lower profile lower profiled, bigger screw, and it's screw through. And it's, that's just, these are more for compaction. It's more for compact, right? So like, you know, I had to research this myself. Situations where you're, you got this, and it's just close quarters, you may need, you may not have a choice, right? So just consider that. One last thing, if you're trying to find name brand, like Chinese stuff just sucks. And I'm not sitting here trying to be, you know, Mr. Pro USA because I worked for a, a USA manufacturing plant. And I think we made the, the biggest pieces of junk I've ever seen in my life. And it's not exaggeration. We produce terrible products knowingly, not like it was a fluke. We knew we were producing trash, but this, this Chinese stuff, from what I understand, some of these alloys wear pretty quick. It's enough to get the ball rolling, but you're gonna wanna upgrade maybe, especially if you're successful, you're making a product, you got something cool going on. You're gonna wanna get rid of these at some point. These are based off THK. THK, it's a Japanese ball screw and bearing manufacturer. You can get THK stuff off Misumi as well. They're, they have the same name, BF12, BK12. These are like, 100 to 300 bucks depending on where you go. These are like 20 bucks on eBay. Here's the thing You can get Korean made BK 12s and BF 12s 
that are like 50 bucks but still have the I think NSK Japanese bearings so there's options to upgrade all of this and make it all match but for, for cost wise you may want to start off with the Chinese ball screws and and have everything compatible with the Japanese version when you get there if that makes sense so you get the ball rolling you get your designs CAD modeled I may not go with a 16 millimeter I may step up to a, a 20 millimeter 25 because at you know 1200 millimeters this can deflect right this starts to deflect so I'm building it with upgradability in mind and backwards compatibility but THK is the man the copied ball screw that this kits modeled from okay my screen's starting to jitter at about 16 minutes the screen starts jittering also one last thing don't use stepper motors get servos I'm gonna get servos from uh, Technic Clearpath this project's gonna be expensive if you want to donate and I document it I don't know where you donate the money to I'm gonna try and piecemeal this together to the 30 millimeter rails that I want completed from a US supplier are gonna be like 1500 bucks and I could probably shave 500 bucks off if I go overseas and get them shipped but you know there's a risk of getting scammed you got to wait a month it just it kind of does become a turn off a little bit so I had to contemplate that any questions leave them in the comments pretty familiar with this stuff when you go and try to fill these a lot of people use oil but you can actually use bearing grease you could screw those on maybe put on this side I just did this for sampling but bring it to the end and put your fitting on the end and pump that thing full of grease it will get tighter but I had a 3d printer going on these 24 7 and I felt like I didn't need to grease them so that's something to consider and if you had the Q series I thought the Q series was awesome I'll maybe I'll find a, a use for these at some point all right guys thanks a lot take care bye bye